Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing CAD challenge number nine presented by Reddit user Quadro and it's this open-ended wrench. We'll be doing it with two sketches and let me start by showing you the challenge. So over here on on Reddit in the subreddit CAD you'll see the CAD challenge number nine and, and you can find these by just using the search for uh, CAD challenge. We're doing figure A, which is the beginner challenge, and you can see the drawing is just this open-ended wrench with 17 and 13 millimeter openings. And let's move over to FreeCAD and start our drawing. So this is the point where you want to pause the video if you want to try to do it yourself without any help. So to do our drawing, we're going to do a new document. In the new document, we're going to add a part, a body, and a sketch and it'll be done on the XY plane. And I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so we're at, the, at about the right distance and we're gonna draw two arcs. So we'll be using the arc tool with the center and end points. And I'm gonna move them to about, 50, to about the radius of 50 because I, uh, I want them to be close to where they're gonna end up. We'll draw a second one. And you'll also notice that I'm, I'm giving them, I'm putting the opening sort of where the opening is going to be facing. Now I'm going to set the radius on each of these and the radiuses are 17 and the radius on this one is 15 and now I'm going to set the distance from the center points and that distance is given as 100 and you'll notice these I, I've set these too far apart so let's actually let's move this one closer first and you see what happens when you move it it changes it, uh, FreeCAD doesn't bring these endpoints along in, as in, in ratio to where they're created. It, it tries to leave them behind. So let's create this length here now and we're going to make that 100. So that didn't modify them too much so that's good. So now let's set the uh, opening sizes and maybe if we set that first it wouldn't have changed as much. So that one's going to be 17 millimeters and this opening is going to be 15 millimeters. Now we're going to add the inner radius to each one of these. The inner radius does not share the, uh, the center point and we're, we're going to try to make these as much to how they're going to look at the end as possible. So we're going to get lines here. Let's set the radius of this one to its final radius of 16 millimeters and then let's add these lines here for the sides of the wrench. And we'll fix this up later. So now we're going to add another one over here. And the center point is going to be about there. And it's going to go from about there to about there. And we'll add these sides as well. So let's set the radius. And this radius is going to be 15 and you see it's starting to take shape. At this point we're going to set the um, we're going to set this point point of the, of the object is going to end up on this line uh, this axis line here the x axis line but first we want to I want to get this fully constrained because when we try to move this it'll change the object a lot. So I'm going to get this fully constrained before I move it anymore. So let's, we're going to add some construction geometry to do that. So let's make sure nothing is selected. We're going to construction geometry. We're going to add a line here and a line here. We're going to make all four of these lines equal, equal in length. And we're going to make these two perpendicular. So now we'll do the same thing on this object. So we'll add two construction lines here. And this is the second one. We'll make these all four equal. Now the drawing doesn't actually tell you the length of these sides. It just, it just gives you the opening. So I don't know if they're equal or not. And this needs to be these need to be constrained and then we're just going to make this perpendicular so we have our two basic wrench shapes 
and now we're gonna I'm gonna constrain this one to this to the x-axis sorry I used a, I need to constrain a constrain a point to a line and we're gonna set this this line is at an angle to the x-axis of 17 degrees now the way it the way it selects um, the inner and the outer or set selects what direction depends on the the order of creation of the line and maybe I need to do a whole nother video on that so this one is also going to be um, so, so that actually so this I think we can do minus 17 to get to get it go the way we want so the drawing calls for the drawing calls for um, 163 but but CAD decides where this angle goes so sometimes for me it, it picks this angle and sometimes it picks this one and it it's the order at which you draw the line which point is drawn first depend t says which which one's gonna get the angle okay so this is starting to, to take shape now the one thing I did notice is that this in the drawing these two points are parallel with each other so when we draw the center line when we draw the handle across we're gonna do that or we can just set this tangent to the axis I think had too many objects picked yeah so I think that's the way the drawing intended it I'm not really sure it doesn't it's it's not clear the final thing we need to do for this sketch is just constrain it to the to, to the center point is we just need to add one more constraint to keep it from being, being mobile that way so I'm just gonna constrain it uh, let's do it from the center here let's do the center to there and we're just gonna make it 50 it doesn't need to be anything particular I don't think to add the handle we're gonna add a second sketch so we'll select body and sketch and XY plane we're gonna draw two lines for the handle and I'm gonna make sure they're not horizontally constrained because I don't think they that we're gonna want that they are gonna be parallel so we'll select both lines and click parallel and then we'll set set them to equal and this time I'm going to select the constraint first and then the elements of the constraint to show that you can do it in either direction now these are a little bit further off than I want okay now the next piece I'm going to be adding is um, the distance of these two and they're, they're going to be 11 millimeters apart and you'll notice I'm picking a line and a point so that's to keep them um, equidistance using a parallel line so I'm going to set a length constraint of 11 millimeters and then the next piece is we're going to add a curvature here and a curvature here and that curvature will be added with an arc and it's going to be about 47 millimeters in radius so but we'll add that next so I'm going to draw it about what we need it to be and now I don't want that constraint yet and we're gonna set the radius so the radius is gonna be the same for both and it's gonna be 47 and let's we'll try to get that in position once the radiuses are selected I'm going to be I'm gonna constrain these two vertexes to be coincident and this one as well and kind of and I try to keep them into place as I'm going the final step to constraining this end is I'm going to add a arc segment of the same radius as this and it'll have about the same center point it'll have exactly exactly the same kind of center point eventually so this is going to share the same radius as this wrench end and that radius is 16 and then to attach this exactly to this wrench end we're going to use an external geometry so selecting the external geometry tool I'm going to select this arc segment then I'm going to select this segment and both of these endpoints because you can do them at the same time and I'm going to select the fix a point onto an object and you'll see that takes care of it. it's completely fixed now to make sure these angles are never are not acute or like this 
I'm going to make all four of these points are going to be tangent. So this one, this one will be tangent to that line. This will be tangent to this line. These will be tangent to each other. And these will also be tangent to each other. And you'll see how that's, that's made this object almost fully constrained all by itself. So now we're going to repeat this, this activity on this side. Now this side will have a smaller uh, radius. I think it's um, 20 something, 23. But we'll get started with just an approximation. And then we'll select both. Now whichever radius you select first, that's what the measurement. So to show, I'll select this one first and I'll add a radius measurement. It will be shared and we'll make it 23. So you see the measurement ended up on the upper radius that time. We'll make all of these points coincident, or both of these points coincident. And then we'll add our additional radius here. I'll make these two coincident and these two coincident. I'll do the same thing with the external geometry here and make this point coincident with that radius. I got to use the right, right tool, of course, and this point coincident with that radius. And then I'm going to go through, now at this point it's fairly well constrained, but you can see I can still wreck the angles here. So I'm going to make these tangent. These two are going to also be tangent. These two will be tangent, as well as these two. So even though I did it with the external geometry over here, you can do it with them with themselves. And you can see um, it's almost fully constrained. But boy, it, it acts funny when it's not. So let's, um, the final piece on this side is to set the radius the same as the external geometry radius so it matches and that's going to be set to 15 millimeters. Now I'm not sure why this one looks different. I don't think it is even though it looks different. I think that's just it got ren rendered that way. So we're not fully constrained. We have one, de one degree of freedom and that's basically this can move so to finish this sketch and get it fully constrained, I added a construction line from the endpoint of each line. And then I made that construction line perpendicular. And now our second sketch is fully constrained. Now the reason I couldn't make these um, horizontally constrained, I'll show you, is that there's an angle here and it's 1.47. So with this sketch complete, I moved over to the first sketch to check it. And what I realized was that I had used the wrong geometry. So it wasn't just a snafu in the free CAD rendering of it. I had used the wrong geometry. So let's go back and now you'll see they're, they're perfectly lined up. So that's, that's the uh, end of our sketches. Now, Based on a drawing, that would be it. We could just pad these two and we'd be done. But what I want to do is I want to pad this to a different thickness than the end so it looks more like a real wrench. So we're going to start by, we're going to start by padding the middle um, so that the ends have something to attach to. If you did it in reverse, I'll, I'll show you real quick. If you try to pad just the ends, you'll see that it only pads one because it doesn't have anything to attach this pad to. But so we're going to start by padding the middle first and we're going to set that to four millimeters and then we're going to pad the ends and set them to eight. We are almost complete with our design here. The next piece we have to do is move this set the handle up by two millimeters to get it into its final position. So with the handle selected, I think that's the handle. Let's check it. Yep. That's the handle. Let's move the handle. We're going to go to super placement and position and move it up in the Z direction by two millimeters. And you see that's now in its final position. The final touches to this design is going to be add, to add the fillet and the chamfer. We'll start by selecting the handles two planes and you can select the other side by using the control key and clicking. 
and we'll select uh, uh, fill it and you'll see that it'll fill it all the edges as is appropriate and that's in the, uh, a lot of time saved from selecting it the edges we're going to leave it at one millimeter and that's our fillet now we'll do the chamfer the chamfer um, I found in, in this iteration of FreeCAD doesn't like it when you try to select these two faces so I'm going to select each ad edge separately by holding the control key and clicking yeah, see. let me try that again click each edge be careful not to get the face and this also demonstrates that you can selectively pick edges and not just uh, whole edges using the plane so you can set uh, different radiuses uh, chamfer radiuses and whatnot so with all these edges selected one more I'm going to select uh, chamfer and I'm going to leave it at one millimeter and click OK and that does it for our model uh, I hope you enjoyed that I like making this one I, I certainly like making you know very real-world objects so make sure you subscribe if you want to see more of these I'm going to be working through a lot of the beginner CAD challenges I, I think that's what I'll be doing um, almost exclusively for a little while at least um, and I'm going to do some of some of them in open SCAD and some of them in blocked CAD as as they apply some of these are uh, surprisingly difficult to do in open SCAD so have a great day and I'll see you next